thank you and uh, good afternoon. So let me make a slight, a very small correction. So I'm not going to talk about, uh, even though we're a data company, but I'm going, not going to talk about data, but uh, how we build uh, virtual appliances, a VM, using CoreOS. So uh, what IROFS does, it is a um, company producing uh, file sharing and collaboration solutions for enterprises, or um, especially for secure uh, security uh, conscious kind of enterprises. Security is very important at these days. So we are like a job box, but behind your firewall. So basically, what we are doing is we build around 30 uh, backend services, and then we wrap them all into one single VM, and then deliver to the customers. So those bigger uh, enterprises can set up their own uh, private Dropbox behind using uh, their on-prem hardware in their private cloud. So uh, we spent a couple of months converting all our services into, into containers and then package them into uh, CoreOS. And here, I, we'd like to uh, share with you about um, our experience in, and, and the technologies we used in the, the process of converting all the things into containers and CoreOS. And I think uh, this talk will be interesting to the community, community because uh, while many uh, people here uh, adopt containers and CoreOS for their own internal infrastructures. We actually ship containers and uh, CoreOS to third-party customers. So that's to me uh, and to us is also a very interesting experience. So this is what uh, the legacy system looked like before the conversion. Uh, we, we use Debian packages for each and every uh, services and then we, we bake all of, all of them into a single uh, Ubuntu base image and then we, we ship the entire huge giant VM image to uh, uh, each and every customer. And we support a few uh, uh, cloud providers and, and uh, virtual, uh, virtual machine hypervisors. And one thing to note is that we only uh, support one single, single VM which is a little bit different from a typical settings with lots of VMs and, and a very distribu distributed system. And the reason is we are a, uh, our client software is, is very decentralized. So the, our entire thinking algorithm is most, mostly peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. So, so all the files are syncing directly from one laptop to another. So the, ser the workload on our server is pretty, pretty light. So we have uh, bigger customers with over thousands of, uh, of users, but uh, the server load is, is it's pretty low, and they are mostly idle. Uh, but the traditional, the legacy appliance has several uh, disadvantages. The first one is the most obvious one is uh, high coupling. So services have very bad interactions among each other. The reason is Debian packages does not do not provide a runtime isolation. So people people. People are free to use, say, file system uh, uh, interactions or some arbitrary ways to, to uh, coordinate between different services, which cause a lot of the difficulties in, say, developing and deploying and upgrading services independently. And also, because uh, Debian packages isolation in terms of packages, operating system pack packages, is pretty weak. So say it's very unsafe for one developer to upgrade one, one server or one service while expecting other services uh, to run as normal because it's very easy to break their uh, libraries, library dependencies, which is also painful for us in the past. And furthermore, we don't have a standard, standard way to say uh, start up a service to stop a service to uh, to create logs to rot rotate logs to uh, monitor services, and uh, which makes developing new services and debugging uh, problems of different services difficult, especially for site on site engineers and for new people who just joined us. And there are other problems. For example, uh, because we use a single uh, Ubuntu based image which limit, limited our, our ability to, to experiment with new operating systems, to, to experiment with, with exciting new technologies. And also, we, we have some specific servers we, we, with specific uh, problems with our specific 
version of this specific operating system, but they do not have a choice. The developers has to work around on uh, the, the, the service code to, to, uh, to avoid those problems. And also, because we have to bake a custom uh, huge VM image for each uh, cloud provider, uh, which is a very expensive uh, experience in terms of uh, de uh, developing and, uh, and maintaining. So we ended up with supporting only very few cloud providers. Uh, so eventually, we converted everything into, oh, sorry, uh, I was looking at, sorry. Right, OK. So eventually, we converted everything into containers. And the, the first, the most obvious benefit to the users is that now, because we no longer build custom uh, OSs, but rely only on a base generic core OS image, so they can deploy our solutions into whatever cloud they want, as long as those clouds support core OS base image, which means basically all the cloud, major mainstream cloud providers. So deploying to any cloud is the first benefit. And secondly, the most, uh, most obvious, obvious benefit for the developers is that now they can, they can enjoy uh, uh, the benefit of microservices, right? They, now they, they are forced to build things in, in a very decoupled fashion and to, to gain very high coherence because now the service boundaries are very well defined by the container technologies. Um, also, because containers have a very good sandboxing uh, uh, in terms of uh, library, library dependency. So now one developer can safely uh, upgrade their own services without worrying about all other, other unrelated services. And there are other, other benefits. For example, now the dependencies of, of, uh, among different services are very clear. Now we can even automatic, automatic, automatically draw the dependency graph among them, which makes reasoning and, uh, and developing and maintaining all our, our complex services much easier than before. And this is not possible with Debian packages because all the dependencies, all the interactions are implicit. Another thing is now our on-site engineers can easily uh, replace a running service at runtime and can easily insert dynamic instrumentation or monitoring infrastructures on the customer's run, running systems. And before, the situation is quite compli complicated and, uh, and the process is, is painful. But now, things can be simplified a lot on site. So we also can easily control the order in which different services boots. Because of these dependencies, so one service needs to wait until other services, other uh, services that service depends on to boot, which is pretty difficult in the past, but now it's quite easy. Uh, what happened? All right. So also in the past, we had one giant configuration service, which, uh, the proper purpose of which is to set up and configure all other independent services, which create, created very high coupling between this service and all other services. Now with, with, with the containers, we have to break that, this service down into many uh, local configuration, uh, smaller services. Uh, side by side with with the Yakra servers, which further help helps us to uh, make the entire system quite decoupled. So now let's take a look. Oh, sorry, I look at the wrong slides again. Uh, in place upgrades. Okay. So the final benefit is previously, whenever a customer wants to deploy, want to upgrade the appliance from one version to another, they had to. They have to wait. Uh, they have to boot up another a new appliance and then try migrate all the data. But now it's no longer the case. So these these are all the benefits. Now let's take a look at how the the containers are orchestrated together within a single VM. So we use an open source tool called Crane, which is very similar to uh, Docker Compose. It allows users, us developers, to use a single file called crane.yaml to define the entire uh, 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 structure of the system. So first of all, it, 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 it defines the containers and all the images used by these containers. And secondly, it defines the links or dependencies between these containers. And we package the Crane program and the Crane YAML file specific to 
IROFS into a special container, which we call a loader container. And the loader, loader container will read the file and then invoke the call, a crane program to launch all the containers and link all, all of them together in one go. So now with the loader, let's see how the entire system uh, boots up on its own. So the only thing, the only file, the only small piece of information the customers need in order to build the system, uh, in order to launch the system, in addition to a base generic core OS image, is a cloud config file. So what it does, what it does, it talks to a registry by default. That's the registry we, we host, and fetches the default the, the, the loader container, and in in turn, the loader container talks to the registry and fetches all the uh, uh, container images defined in the YAML file. And then it launches the containers and link them all together. So as simple as this. Um, now let's take a look at how the uh, system upgrades itself at runtime without launching a new VM. So this is the old system. And then, and then by the time the loader uh, Whenever the user asks the system to upgrade, the, the loader, the old loader will talk to the registry and fetch the new loader, the, a new version of the loader, which can contain a very different uh, topology file, the crane file. And then the new loader will do the same, which is to fetch all the loader new images. And some of them can be the same as the old image to the system and then uh, launch them in parallel with the running system. And it will do the, all the uh, smoke testing and whatever uh, uh, sanity checking uh, before tearing down the old system. And, uh, and then whenever everything is fine, we will get rid of the old system. So while all, all, all of this is happening in the background, we also expose some transparency or some visibility to the IT admins in the front end. And these are the two user interfaces. On the left, it is the, uh, the web interface showing the downloading progress when the system is downloading containers. And on the right is the uh, virtual terminal console showing the IP addresses and other configurations so that IT admins can uh, configure necessary information. So it turns out we spent quite a while developing and refining the entire system like this. And it, and it, it, it was not a trivial task. But good news is uh, all the things we, we've been doing are not limited to ROFS appliance itself, but it, it, it is applicable. The entire system is, or the backend infrastructure uh, is usable by all the uh, enterprise applications as long as they run multiple containers in one single VM. So uh, I'm very happy today to announce that we decided to open source all the under, uh, underlying infrastructure code and build scripts as an open source project called Ship Enterprise. Uh, it is hosted on GitHub, and, um, and we hope uh, this Ship Enterprise project can help developers to, uh, to build complex systems, uh, especially complex multi-container uh, VMs uh, at ease. And more importantly, uh, we want to, uh, we hope these two can help uh, people to deliver a better user experience. By, divide, uh, by shipping only a single small uh, clock config file and a, a generic core as space image, rather than divide, uh, shipping always a giant VM. Um, and in, in return, we will get more customer, or get more love from the customers, we hope. Um, and there are still, this is a very, still a very early stage project, and there are lots of work to be done. Uh, specifically, we plan to support multiple containers, uh, multiple VMs, and eventually our customers will, will grow and uh, will scale, will need to scale out a single VM into multiple ones. I believe uh, other, other developers will have the same need. And also, uh, another plan is to uh, allow uh, the, the, the system to upgrade cont containers individual, uh, independently rather than relying on a single uh, loader to uh, upgrade at everything at once. Okay, so. Once again, my name is Wei Han Wang, and uh, feel free to reach me at this Twitter handle, or you can find me uh, after the talk for questions and comments. Thank you very, mu very much. <laughs>